Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about the process of temperature inversion. In this video we will discuss different types of temperature inversion as well as the process which leads to these inversions. Now to begin with let's try to understand how our atmosphere gets heated. We know that short wave radiation from sun comes to our earth. These short wave radiations are not absorbed by the atmosphere but the reach of our earth and the heat of our earth. The earth which gets heated by this short wave radiation, it emits long wave radiation here you can see them. And these long wave radiations are absorbed by the atmosphere and they get heated. So you can see that the atmosphere is heated from below. So the warmer part of the atmosphere will lie close to our ground surface and as we go up in the atmosphere the temperature should decrease. So if we plot the temperature curve of the atmosphere we can see that it should decrease as the height increases. So here we can see that the temperature is decreasing. So this is the normal phenomena or this is the expected temperature profile of the atmosphere. This decrease in temperature with increase in height is called lapse rate. Now if there is a situation where there is a warm layer of atmosphere above the cold layer of atmosphere then we will see that this temperature profile will change over here at the border. Here the temperature will again start increasing. And this phenomena where there is a warm layer above cold air is called temperature inversion. There are many types of temperature inversions which can be broadly classified into two groups non-advectional inversion and advectional inversion. So advection basically means horizontal movement of air. So a non-advectional inversion are those inversions which does not require horizontal movement of air while advectional inversion are those inversions which require horizontal movement of air. Now let's see each of them one by one. The radiation surface inversion is the most important inversion. So let's see the process by which this radiation which is also called as surface inversion occurs. We know that during the daytime our earth absorbs a lot of radiation and it gets heated. Moreover, the air which is near to the ground also gets heated. So as we go up in the atmosphere, we will see that the temperature of atmosphere will decrease as we are moving up in the atmosphere. Now during night time, what happens? The earth which has absorbed this radiation, it will start to re-emit those radiations back to the atmosphere. It will start to lose heat. And in the process, it will become very cool. Now because it becomes cool, the layer of air which is in contact with the land will also become cool. And if this process goes on for a very long time, if the night time is longer and certain conditions are met, then we will see that the air which is in contact with the land will also become cooler. It will become more cooler than the air over here. And thus it will create an inversion. Why? Because now cool air is over here. And as you move up in the air, the temperature here is lower. But when you will move over here, the temperature will start to increase. And that is why there is a temperature inversion at this boundary. And this kind of inversion is called radiation inversion or surface inversion. Now there are certain conditions which must be met for radiation inversion. This includes long winter nights. The long winter nights allow sufficient time for earth to release the radiation to the atmosphere and get cooler and in turn heat the layer of air just above it. So the long winter nights are necessary to provide the adequate time for cooling of the land and cooling of the air above the land. The second important condition for radiation inversion is that there should be cloudless sky. Now to understand this let's try to understand what happens when clouds are present. We know that our earth radiates long wave radiation to the atmosphere. It releases the heat. Now some of the radiation which it releases, it is absorbed by these clouds. And these clouds then re-radiate those radiation. And we see that they re-radiate it in all directions. So some of the radiation will reach our earth and it will heat the earth again. So we can see that net heat lost by the earth is reduced in the presence of the clouds. And that is why a cloudless sky, it allows the radiation emitted by our earth to reach the space. 
So a higher rate of heat loss can be achieved in cloudless atmosphere. And that is why a cloudless atmosphere is an important condition for formation of radiation inversion. The third important condition for formation of surface inversion or radiation inversion is that the air should be dry. That is, it should not have large amount of moisture in it. Now the reason for it is that if our earth is releasing a lot of radiation back to the atmosphere and it is cooling down, the air which is just in contact with our land will also cool down. Now if there is moisture in this air, what will happen? The moisture will start to condense. It will start to change its state from vapor to liquid or fog. Now during this process, we have already seen that when uh, water vapor converts from vapor to water that is from gaseous state to liquid state it releases this much amount of heat this is called latent heat of vaporization so this heat which is released in the atmosphere will increase the temperature of the atmosphere and therefore the process of loss of heat and cooling down of atmosphere will again be reduced and that is why dry air is also an important condition for radiation inversion or surface inversion the fourth condition is snow covered ground surface. Now this is also one important condition. It also helps in the formation of radiation inversion. If there is snow over the land, then during the daytime, the solar radiation which comes, it is reflected back. Most of the radiation will be reflected back which will keep the land very cool. So during the night, the land is already cool. So the air which comes over here will automatically get cooled down and we will see a radiation inversion. So here are some additional conditions which are necessary for radiation inversion. Long winter nights, we have already discussed that long winter nights allows more terrestrial radiation to escape the space. Therefore, because of long duration, the heat loss through the radiation released by the earth will be greater than the heat received by solar radiation during the daytime, thus allowing the land to cool down and thus cool the atmosphere just above it. Slow movement of air is also important because the air, if it moves at a very high velocity, the earth will not be able to cool it down because it will not have sufficient time for it. But if the air is moving slowly, the land will have sufficient time to cool the air above it. Snow covered ground surface, we have seen that it reflects most of the insulation coming from the sun during the day. Thus, it keeps the land at a lower temperature. In the night, the earth which is already at low temperature can cool down the air above it, thus creating a radiation inversion. Now remember, we have discussed all these conditions, but radiation inversion can occur even if few of these conditions are not fully satisfied. Next type of inversion is subsidence inversion. This occurs when large amount of air column will start to descend. And we see that while this air is trying to descend, it gets heated. It gets adiabatically heated. And when it reaches a temperature, which is sufficient enough, the air will not descend further, but it will get accumulated. It will form a layer over here. And now we can see that there is cold air over here and there is this warm air over here. And at this margin, we can see that there is an inversion of temperature. So this kind of inversion, which occurs because of descending air is called subsidence inversion. The next inversion is turbulence inversion. It occurs because of uneven landforms which provide friction to the air which is moving above it. Here we can see a layer of air which is moving over this landform and it gets disturbed, it gets perturbed and therefore it generates some eddies over here. These eddies, they will cause vertical mixing of air. Air from higher layers will be brought down and air from lower layers will be brought up. There will be a vertical mixing and because of this, the air from this layer will get cooler. The heat from this layer will be removed and it will be taken to the lower layers. So we see that the heat from this layer is removed. It will become cooler. The temperature of this layer will decrease. But the air which is over here, over this region, it did not get perturbed. It did not get disturbed. It was calm. So the temperature of this layer is not changed. It still remains warm. So we see that this cold layer is developed between the warm airs and therefore at this margin we have a temperature inversion. So this kind of temperature inversion which is caused by turbulence in the air by vertical mixing of air is called turbulence inversion. The next inversion is air drainage inversion. 
and this inversion occurs in the mountainous areas where there is a valley and mountains surrounding it. We know that during the day, the mountains absorb much more radiation compared to the valley. They get much heated. But during the night, they will release this radiation at a very higher rate compared to the valley. So the air which is closer to these mountains will get cooled down. Their temperature will decrease compared to the temperature of air in the valley. Now this cold air is heavier. So what it will do? It will start to descend in the valley. And we will see that cold air is accumulated in this valley. While the warm air which was there in the valley is uplifted. We see now that there is a warm air over here and below there is a cold air which has come from the hilly regions. So this kind of inversion is called air drainage inversion. We see that the air from the hilly regions it drains in the valleys. And that is why it is called air drainage inversion. Here we can see an example of an air drainage inversion. We see that this is the slope of a mountain. Here is also a top of a mountain. Here we do not see any fog. But when we see this valley, there is a fog because this is the cold air which is accumulated in the valley. Next inversion is thermal inversion. It occurs in our stratosphere. We know that in our stratosphere there is ozone which absorbs the UV radiation coming from the sun. Now as this ozone absorbs the UV radiation, it will get heated. This heat heats the air in the stratosphere. And therefore, when we go up the tropopause, we will see that the temperature will slowly increase. So this is a permanent inversion in our atmosphere because of the absorption of radiation by the ozone layer. And that is why it is called thermal inversion. Next inversion is advection inversion and it can occur by two methods. The first is that suppose this is our temperature profile of atmosphere and from some other part we see that warm air comes over here. Now we see that at this boundary there is a temperature inversion. The temperature would decrease but because of this warm air which has come from some other place the temperature in the atmosphere will increase and that is why there is a temperature inversion over here. The second way it can occur at the surface. We can see that similarly there could be cold air which can come from some other place. Now this cold air which is blowing over this land will decrease the temperature over here. But the air in the upper layer is warm. So at this boundary we will again see that there will be a temperature inversion. Frontal inversion. Now frontal inversion occurs at the fronts. Here we see a warm front where warm air is moving. Now we know that cold air is heavier. So the warm air will be moved. The warm air will slowly climb over this cold air. And we can clearly see if we vertically travel the atmosphere. Here there is cold air and here there is warm air. So at these boundaries we can clearly see that there is a temperature inversion. Similar thing also occurs in cold front. There is another front which is called occluded front. And here what happens that warm air is trapped between the cold airs and we see that these two cold airs they can merge and they can uplift this warm air so we can see that here there is an occluded front and in this occluded front the cold air is near the ground while as we move up we will get warm air so here there is temperature inversion at these boundaries again now let's see the effect of temperature inversion the first is that formation of smog or fog. So basically these temperature inversions they help in the formation of smog and fog. We can see here that there is a temperature inversion in the atmosphere. Here there is a warmer air and there is temperature inversion at this layer. So what will happen whatever smoke is released by this factory it will not be able to cross this layer unless this air is warmer than this warm air. So it will start to get accumulated below this layer. And we will see that over the time a lot of smoke will be accumulated. Now if the amount of smoke is higher and this layer is closer to the ground, what will happen? There will be smog and fog over here. And that is why we see that factories generally have a longer chimney. Now here is an example where we can see how this temperature inversion causes smog. There is a temperature inversion layer over here. The smoke which is released by this factory is not able to penetrate that inversion layer. Therefore, it gets accumulated in this region and thus this region experiences smog. 
Now, this temperature inversion also helps in magnifying the effect of these smog and fog. In normal situations where we see that where there is no temperature inversion, what will happen? The warm air will move up and as it moves up, it will pick up the smog in the area and that will be taken to the higher atmosphere. But when there is a temperature inversion, there is warmer air up there, the colder air will not rise up. So the smog which is there in the city will remain intact in the city. So the temperature inversion also magnifies the effect of smog. It not only leads to the formation of smog, but it also helps it persist for a longer time. Another important effect of temperature inversion is atmospheric stability. This atmospheric stability, it inhibits rainfall. Let's see how. So under normal circumstances, we see this is the profile of our atmosphere. The temperature will decrease with the height. Now the warm air is over here. The warm air is lighter. The cold air is up in the atmosphere, it is heavier. So normal phenomena is that this warm air will move up. Now when this warm air moves up, and if there is vapor in this warm air, we will see that as this air moves up, it will cool down, it will form clouds and it will give rain. But what happens when there is atmospheric stability or when there is a temperature inversion? We see that cold air is lying near to the ground. Warm air is up in the atmosphere. Now this cold air is heavier. This warm air is lighter. This heavier air will not move up. So there is a stable atmosphere created. And if we consider that there is vapor over here, this vapor at max can reach to this level. After this, it cannot move up. So it will not form clouds. And since it will not form clouds, it will not give rainfall. So atmospheric stability prevents rainfall and temperature inversion creates atmospheric stability. The next major impact of temperature inversion is that it causes frost in the lower atmosphere because cold air is accumulated in the lower atmosphere. We had earlier seen about air drainage inversion where cold air from the hilly regions will accumulate in the valley. Now we see that in the upper atmosphere in the valley there is warm air but close to the valley we have this cold air. So the vegetation over here can experience frost and here is an example of this. In this image, we can see that all the plantations which were below this line, they have frost while the vegetation which was above this line did not have effect of frosting. So this is how the temperature inversion also causes frosting in the lower atmosphere. I hope I was able to explain what are temperature inversion and what are its types and what are the effects of temperature inversion. If you have liked the video, do not forget to subscribe the channel and share it with your friends. I have made this kind of animated videos on all topics of geography which are related to our UPSC exams. So please watch them. Thanks for watching the video.